Then Mem Sif Bet. We started this if yesterday, and it is on Daf Samech Tet Amud Aleph of the regular prints of Mishnah Brura. We had a lengthy discussion of the Achronim. What happens when a Sefer Torah Shalom falls from someone's hand? When a Tfilin falls? When a Mezuzah falls? We did not discuss. We uh, we did allude to it. The Hamobad writes that the Mezuzah that from a person's hand is not a ground for fasting necessarily. Tfilin, we mentioned that if it is um, open, not in its cover, not in its box, then it is ground for fasting depending on how far how high up it falls from, and so on. And of course, the Kappa Chaim writes, even if it is in its box that falls, even though that you don't have to fast, you would have to give some staka, because again, at, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, still consider some sort of disrespect and disayon. And we mentioned that Sefer Torah, even if it's in its box, doesn't make a difference really. And we went through the discussion of whether or not everyone that's present there, everyone that sees it, has to fast and so on. So that's something that would be ground for questions at the very least. Maran Chida, as we mentioned, in Chaim Sha'al Chelek Aleph, Siman Yudbet discusses this at length, but we basically covered most of the cases that are relevant to day-to-day -day life. Now we move on with another area of respect for Kitve Kodesh, for anything that has Kedusha, and that is if they could be exposed to Erva, to nakedness, and also a, a bedroom of a husband and wife, which we read again, the Shukhan Aruch, a home, which really is a reference to a room, a room that has in it Tfilin, and it's not just Tfilin, the Mishnah Bura over here says, adin humashim o siduret filot. same would be the halacha for a humash or a sidur that you daven from, or sha'ar sfarim, any other sefer that you have, even though that's not containing psukim of Tanakh, it's not humash, it's not Tfilin, it's not Tanakh, but it's sifre kodesh, ben bichtiva o bitfus, whether it is handwritten or with the fus, hakol yesh bahem kedusha. All of them have Kedusha. Now, this is a, uh, let's call it a can of worms because it is, it, it's a very wide discussion of whether or not printing press would have a Kedusha of writing. Of course, when you write Kitve Kodesh, the, the items that you have written, they have Kedusha, uh, you know, goes without saying that Mezuzot and Filin and, and Sifret Torah and so on, they have Kedusha. But not only that, but any sefer that you write, the, the writing of the Vrei Torah contains Kedusha. Now, the question that came up a few hundred years ago was whether or not a print also has Kedusha. Because a print, I'm not writing. You have a typeset, and then they would press either the typeset on top of the paper or the paper on top of the typeset. And there you would have perhaps a a writing now the typeset is backwards, really. It's not. It's not utiot av. Um, you know, if you have a a bet, the bet in typeset is is written backwards, right? You can imagine every stamp that you have, the stamp is written backwards, but then you stamp it, then it's forward. So that's how it works. Works. So the act of stamping. Whether or not that's considered ktiva is a big machloket. And we pass in that they also have kedusha. Now, the Shevet HaLevi, Ravaz Niral Shalom, discusses how about the printing system that we have nowadays. We have laser printers. There's no nothing. There's nothing there. It's a picture image that is computerized. It's um, with, with electro, very, very sophisticated electronics that this is uh, printed on your on your paper is that considered writing or not? So even though that it, some aspects of leniency are taken in consideration, for instance, we mentioned before that the cover of sfarim are not considered a cover. The cover of the sefer is batel to the sefer, and therefore is considered the kedusha of the sefer. 
just like the papers that the Divrei Torah is printed on are, are Kadosh, so is the cover. It's not that you could say, well, this is one cover, so cover it one more time and you will have double cover. You can't say that because this is part and parcel of it. Now, the question is not just for having it in the bedroom of a husband and wife, but many people have pocket-sized farim that they want to carry with themselves at all times, their pocket mishnayot, their pocket tehillims, and so on. Can you go to the bathroom with having that covered once in your pocket now? So you see, traditionally speaking, people have them in a Ziploc bag or in a clear bag. The sefer or tehillim is in the bag, and that they put inside their, cup, their, their pocket, so hence you have two covers. And then you could, you could go with your jacket to the bathroom and that's fine, right? Or can you go with just the, the sefer itself being in your pocket? Can you say, well, this is one cover and my jacket is a second cover. So, so technically speaking, that you should not be able to say, but there are those who say, because our print is by itself questionable, if it contains Kedusha, so you have another suffix to rely on. From Nisim Karelis, from David Yosef, many others, they are willing to, when it comes, push, push comes to Shav, when you have a, a scenario in which you don't have a plastic cover, you can't put the sefer anywhere else, and so on. And, you know, it happens many times in airports and, 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 and in places that you can't just put the sefer outside, in those cases, they say you could rely on the fact that the cover of the sefer itself could be considered one cover, and then your pocket is considered the second cover, and hence it will be mutar. So even though that the we don't want to rely on that, but but the evet you could. But this is really a sugya for later when we do the the, the simanim of kufnun, but the kufnuns. But you know, for our purpose. Because Mr. Bura talks about the, the machloket of what printing is considered, that's what we're bringing this in right now. So says the Mishnah Bura hence that all of these, even the defus, yesh bahem kedusha. Now, first of all, it's not just the mezuzah. How about you see many of the Sfaradim, they're in, into heebie jeebie things. You go to the house of someone that just had a baby. And uh, they have this shallot, this paper printed for Shmirat that has all kinds of designs of Shemot, of Shemot HaKodesh, and this for protection. Many people have it like, you know, hanging on, a, uh, on the door that the baby is in and so on. Is that considered um, also Kedusha that you can, you know, the bedroom of the husband and wife, if you have it inside the, the room, uh, is that considered also Sparim or not? That also is um, considered um, some, something that the Kafachaim writes. The Kafachaim says if you have those papers up that have the Shemot on it, that also uh, have to be covered twice um, in, in the bedroom of a husband and wife, and also in front of Erva, you cannot be exposed. The Benish Chai writes, this is in Od Yosef Chai in Parashat Chaye Sarah, he says that a person should be careful in the, in the printed Sfarim even, just like Sfarim that are written with hand, print is the same thing, but Kavachayim seems to be a little bit more lenient that push comes to Shah, you could be lenient to rely on those who are Mekel, uh, as we mentioned just a moment ago, that even if they're not Kelib and if they're not covered twice, so long as you put a sardine, you put a blanket on top of them and the body of the person who is naked or in the case of the husband and wife, they are covered and the sefer is covered once, that would be sufficient, says, says the Kafa Chaim. Right, again, this becomes a machloket if, if, of course, if you could put them in a different reshoot, that would be best. For instance, if you have a walk-in closet or even the wall closets that have a sliding door and you put a sefer there and you close the door, that's already considered a different shoot. Now closets, the, the drawers is not necessarily considered a different domain. It's considered a cover, 
but it's not considered a different domain necessarily unless depending on how high and how big they are and so on. So they could technically be questionable, but nevertheless, the walking closets, the, the wall closets and the door is closed, that's considered already a different domain and you don't need to cover them even. You could just put them then close the door and that would be fine, but uh, Kafachaim is willing to, to go one level of leniency that one cover on top of the sefer, as long as the nakedness is covered as well, is sufficient. In other words, the two covers are in two different places. One cover is on top of the sefer, and one cover is on top of the, the person that is, is, is not dressed, or the couple that are not dressed. That is considered fine as well, says the Kafachaim. But um, it's interesting to, to note that even though that these farim that are printed, we generally speaking assume that they also have a kedusha, but be that as it may, sefer that is written, the ktavyad is actually handwritten, has a much higher level of kedusha, and therefore it helps a person's learning. If you learn from a, a paper that is more kadosh, your learning is more holy and you retain the learning better. If you take a look, you'll see um, that, that uh, many of the Sfarim, they write that the paper was taken from Eretz Israel, the paper that was printed on, or they make sure to say that the paper was created, it, it was as printed on a paper that was not made with Chilul Shabbat, right? Whether or not you want to print in Israel or print in China or get papers from China, which Goyim made, even though that it's not, there's no Kedusha in, in the paper itself like that, but at least it's not a paper that the Jew was Shabbat to make. So it goes back and forth, you know, both halachic and hashkafic, but nevertheless, when a person writes it, Rabbi Chia, the Gemara says, Rabbi Chia was discussing with one of his friends, what do they do if the Torah gets forgotten from Kali said? And Rabbi Chia said, I will do something that the Torah would never be even forgotten. What would you do for a Torah never to be forgotten? Says Rabbi Chia, I would go plant flax. And from the flax, I would make, make nets. And from the nets, I would, I would trap a deer. I would shecht it myself, skin it, and feed the, 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 the meat of the deer to aniyim. And the parchment, I would write humash on it and then teach it to the little kids. Kids would teach it to each other. So the Mufashim asks us, well, why do you have to do all the process of planting? So go just buy parchment. He says, no, if you want the Torah not to be forgotten, every step of the way has to be with Kedusha. Even the trapping, even, even from the meat, you do tzedakah, you give it to Aniim, all of that adds to the Kedusha. And when you teach from that Sefer Torah, when you learn from that Sefer Torah, you don't forget the, the learning that you have because the process has been with Kedusha. So be that as it may, that's one aspect of it as well. Says the Mishnah Buram, what is this halakha that you have to have two covers in the sefer, the husband and wife want to be together in that room, that the, anything of the Vark Dusha, sefer, tefillin has to be cover inside the cover. Keli betoch keli. Says the Mishnah Buram, ve'afilu imhem k'tav neshita, even if it's not Ashurit necessarily. It's just a, a regular Hebrew that we write with the Torah. It's the same thing. The, the cover of the Sefer itself, the, the binding is not considered a, a Kisui. That is it's the Sefer itself. The He Migufa Sefer. It's considered part and parcel of the Sefer itself. So it's not considered one cover. Uh, we need two more covers on top of that. Now, a tzaddik is not it's not kitve kodesh. But if it's if it's shila malon, if it's if it's a menorah, that's a problem because that's la It should not be there to begin with. That's correct. You don't put that in a, in a bedroom of husband and wife. You put it in the dining room, and even that. You have to be careful. Again, we, we're not really getting into that discussion right now, right now. But if we have little kids at home, for instance, look at this mezuzah right now here, right? This mezuzah has a 
clear cover. You can see the, the name of Shin Dalet and Yud, and you can see the Mezuzah itself, right? Because it, even though that it has so-called two covers, right? It has the saran wrap around it, and then it has the plastic clear cover on top. First of all, both of them are miyuchat for the mezuzah. Secondly, both of them are see-through. So if you have this on the door, you cannot be roaming around the house naked. Well, normally people do not do that anyways. But how about if you have a little kid? And the kids, especially when they want to make their parents upset, what do they do? They take the diaper off, start running around, right? Or sometimes you have to go get them and they're dirty and you want to wash them and you're carrying your kid when they're naked. Right? So that is, or so ah, when, when, when they, you know, they have bowel movement and they, they have a dirty diaper basically, and uh, you're carrying that, or the kid is carrying that around in front of Kitfei Kodesh, that also is questionable, which again, this is a discussions for later sugyot that we're going to learn, but for our purposes, this would be a problem because you could see the Kitfei Kodesh while Ervai is is, um, is exposed. So that, uh, of course, is something that you have to be mindful of as well. The Taz, their rights that anyone that is mekel, anyone that's lenient in the Kedusha of the Sfarim that are printed, um, it's not a good thing. It's disrespectful to the Torah because printing is exactly like writing. So this is where I said that the, the, the diffus that the Taz 400 years ago is talking about is the typeset press that, that actually, according to many, is considered ktiba as well. But again, our printing is a totally different, um, different system to which the Achronim say you could be a little bit more mekel, but again, the consensus of the Achronim still is that a person should have um, a hanhaga of kedusha for the sfarim that are printed in our day and age as well. Yes, printed printed items. Rab Chaim Kanievsky is brought in Sefer Ginze Kodesh, and same is with Mr. Karelis, with Rishabat Talavi. They all say that the sfarim or even the prints of a regular shiur that you give and you print papers like this uh, of the Torah, that also needs to be um, nignas, that, that has kedusha. I can't just toss it um, away. You have to do ginizah, proper, proper ginizah on it. There are those that they say if you never used it, if you print it and you never used it for learning, then it would be mutar to just toss it, toss it away. But that by itself is very, very questionable. And uh, certainly one should ask a question before they do it, this becomes a very big challenge for kids, uh, for, for um, people who have lots of kids and school every day sends the kids home with prints of different things, you know, parsha sheets and, and uh, whatnot. And uh, if you want to every year um, gather all the sheets that every kid brings home, you'll have a box of Geniza from every one of your kids. And, uh, you know, it becomes somewhat um, of, of a challenge they have so much Giniza papers around. So that really requires a proper question of what part of it is considered, what part of it is not considered. And it's not only limited to that. You have, again, this is not a sugya we are dealing with right now primarily, but you have Jewish magazines. You have Mishpacha magazines. You have, I mean, all the Jewish magazines, usually, usually, I'm not saying, well, but usually they have a page or two of the Torah. Sometimes it's halakha, sometimes it's on parasha, sometimes it's on the moed that's upcoming and so on. So do, can you toss away the entire magazine after you're done with it and say, ah, the divrei Torah is batel berov, you know, it's batel b'shishim. Or can you say, well, it has, a, you know, four pages of divrei Torah in it. And I have to rip that, you know, away and do giniza on that separately. So that becomes a very, very valid question as well. Yeah. No, no, shredding would be disrespectful as well. Right? If you have to do Giniza, you have to do Giniza. The question is, if you have to do Giniza, you know, does he have Kiddusha, does he not have Kiddusha? That's really something that is worthy of its own, its own talk. Yeah, so there are those who say, yeah, 
So those who say you could dabble wrap it and put it next to the garbage, don't put it in the garbage yourself, put it next to another garbage. The, the, the recycle, and then the, the recycle guys will put it in, but that doesn't necessarily work in Los Angeles necessarily, uh, unless you put it on top of the recycle, uh, you could do that, you know, meaning they close the, the, the blue door and put the magazines and those stuff, the Apple wrap on top of, of that. When they pick it up and dump it, that will be dumped also, but it's not so simple because sometimes they, it depends how, how fast they pull it up. Sometimes you could throw it and toss it to the second side of, of the truck. Again, this depends on, on what city you live in. The East Coast, um, the, way, the way it works, the, the, the garbage system is uh, there, are two, um, there are two individuals in the back of the truck. They go with it and they help. In Los Angeles, it's all automated. So it's a little bit different. And over there, if you put it next to it or on top of it, they'll just conveniently put it inside for you. So there are those who say, you know, that would work. You're not doing it. You're just double wrapping it. Putting it in. The goy is, is putting it there. So a double wrap and recycle and you not doing it, them doing it, you know, combination of all of those, there are those who are willing to be mekel. But again, that will be, uh, at some point, we'll have a shiur, Bezat Hashem on Shabbat afternoon about, uh, about what needs Giniza, what need, doesn't need Giniza, what to do with the kids' uh, work from school and magazines and so on. That would be a fascinating talk to be had at, at some point. Let's just finish this uh, this piece of Mishnah Burah. Mitato la'asot tzrachav at shiotziem beheder acher. So this, the, the Shukharuch said, it's asur to have a feeling in the room when, when, when a husband and wife are together, the shamesh bo mitato, until you take the feeling out or you put them in kli toch keli. So when he says, um, the shamesh mitato, that the husband and wife are together, or says the mishtabura, or a person wants to go to the bathroom. You know, again, uh, for, for a kid, let's say, that has potty in the room, this happens a lot. You have some kids that they're not ready to be sitting on top of the, the stall, but they have their own private plastic potty that's on the floor in the room. And they go to potty and then you empty that, that, that plastic in, in the bathroom, right? So if you have a potty like that, or for older individuals, uh, people with catheter or people who have a need to have a, an adult potty, in, in their room. So that is something, some, something basically important to keep in mind as well. It's not just husband and wife being together, but you know, being exposed to, um, to Tso'a also is a, a question. And when it says, when you take it to a different room, that's sufficient. Or you could put a mechitza in front of it. So you have one of these dividers that we have over here, that would be even sufficient, even if it's in the same room. You lock the sefer, block the tefillin with a mechitza that's 10 fachim high, right? About this much high. That is sufficient for, uh, for even tashmisha mita in that same room, even though that sefer is co not covered at all, is on the other side of the mechitza, that would be sufficient. So hence, you see that the, um, the sliding door mirror uh, closet doors, the, the wall closet, that's sufficient. You can put it just there and close the door or a walk-in closet, of course, it will be considered a different different room, a different um, domain. So that would have to be also fine. But Zatashim will continue this in the days to come.